I'm Gabriel from the Society of Biological Engineering, and today we have Anne Lee with me, who is the recipient of the DIC1 Award. Anne Lee is also the Senior Vice President of Gene and Tech, but she's also the Head of Global Technical Development at Roche. So, hi Anne. Hi Gabriel, how are you? I'm good. Um, so Anne, what does it mean for you to receive the DIC1 Award? You know, it's really such an incredible honor for me to receive that award. Danny is a professor who I've really admired for so long. I never had, I was not an actual student of him, of his, however I feel like I benefited from his influence and his tutelage. You know, the first time I met Danny, it was when I was working at Merck in vaccines development, and Danny was also an industrial consultant, and so he would come and really challenge us, challenge our thinking, challenge our assumptions, and we would always walk away learning something more. Um, and then another time was when he, you know, was the chair of the um, of the A Star BTI. BTI. This is in Singapore. He was the bio uh, bio technology processing center. BPI. Sorry, BPI um, Center Institute. He was the uh, scientific chairman. He was the chairman of the scientific advisory board, and he asked me to serve on that board with him for five years. And so I had a front row seat to his um, leadership and his direction and his vision. So um, it's really just such an incredible honor for me. Sounds like it helped you also in your career. You just, you're taking this uh, with a lot of respect. This is good. Um, my next question would be, uh, because for young engineers, it's always interesting to know how someone made it. So um, how, how did you do a transition after your PhD uh, at Yale to the industry? Okay, so um, I can tell you a pretty funny story. Uh, when I was doing my PhD at Yale, I studied you know, chemical engineering, I was doing a lot of chromatography, and one of the um, companies that I would partner with was with Genentech. My professor was a, a consultant at Genentech, and so we had Genentech scientists even working in our laboratories at times, and so I had a strong collect, uh, interaction with um, Genentech employees. Um, so I thought that I would actually love to go and work at Genentech, right? So when it came time for me to go and interview, I interviewed at a number of places. Uh, and when I, one, of my, you know, one of my top, most obvious places to go would have been Genentech because I knew the people so well. But unfortunately, I was not able to get a job at Genentech. And um, in fact, when I met with the director of the purification organization, his advice to me was, Anne, go and learn from a large pharma company. Uh, if you have a chance to go to a Merck, go to a Pfizer, go to a place like that, right? And in fact, Merck was really most, uh, admi um, the most admired company in America at the time. So I was a little bit disappointed um, but I went to Merck. Um, it was a great, great career that I had at Merck. I loved um, the company. I loved what I was doing in terms of making vaccines. But I think the message to um, you know, young engineers is never to give up, right? Because um, as it turns out, after 16 years, I had the opportunity to go to Genentech, and I've been happy ever since. Ever since. Wow, that's an interesting story. Thank you. Um, do you have an insight as to what a good leader is? Well, I mean, that's something I really try to aspire to all the time, and I do think about that. But, um, you know, I think a good leader is somebody who really just is interested and cares a lot about their people, right? Um, I think there's a lot of different things that a leader has to be able to do. But I know for me, when I really am working with incredible people, um, my most important things are to really help establish the direction and the strategy so that we can make sure that all these great people are focused in the right direction um, so that we can all kind of row together in the same you know same way and then really just show my enthusiasm and my um, you know my, my interest in what it is that they're doing so uh, you know for me I think really the people that work for me are really the, um, the biggest assets that we have and so I do try to do what I can to develop them give them opportunities and really I just am so pleased to see them succeed. This is great. You're lucky. I would like to be one of your employees. Um, for younger engineers, do you have um, one or a few little advice um, to have this interview? 
Well, I don't know if I should admit this, but I do really want to say something to really young chemical engineers. Um, you know, chemical engineering is not an easy major. And for me, I um, almost flunked out of, I, I don't know, I shouldn't say flunked out, but I almost failed my first chemical engineering class, okay? So um, luckily I did well in all the other classes I was taking, but chemical engineering is not an easy major. But uh, you know, once you've confined what your passion is, and for me, that was really when I had the chance to start doing undergraduate research and really just was so passionate about the kind of work that I was doing, then all that material and energy balance stuff kind of like, you know, I passed that, I, I was, I, luckily I passed the class, barely, but um, then I was able to really kind of like just follow my passion and, um, um, really pursue you know various aspects of chemical engineering. I think chemical engineering is such a broad profession. There are it, it can do so many interesting things, and uh, you know I would really encourage people to kind of show some perseverance because I know for me that's what I had to do. Thanks. Thank you so much, Annie. Yeah, thank you.